Hey guys, so today I wanted to do a Q&A because I haven't done one in a couple of months and Instagram just had their new thing that they added to their stories where you can say ask me a question and then you can get responses through that. So I wanted to kind of like try that and use it for a YouTube Q&A. I really like the Instagram community a lot. So if you're not following me over there, please do so because it just feels like such an intimate community. I share my outfits Monday through Friday every week there now and also I share a lot like more personal stuff on my Instagram stories so definitely check that out and let's get started so I'm gonna try to run through these pretty quickly because there were several and I kind of grouped them by category so I'm gonna start with like Instagram YouTube questions how do you stay visually consistent on Instagram and what are your tips on gaining exposure? I think that when I was thinking about like Instagram I wanted to create something that was very consistent something in a niche where I talk a lot about things that I'm passionate about regarding fashion. I started out with like slow fashion and talking about what you can do while building and recreating a new wardrobe and then also trying to do that like more consciously. So that's kind of what I've done and I've continued to do for over a year now. And during that time, I just was trying to go on my own personal style journey. So a lot of people found that very relatable I think, but then also I didn't put in my daily salad or like anything else that was random. Like when you see my feed, you know what you're gonna get every single day, uh, which is two posts that are about fashion, about my outfit that day. So that's really what I've stuck to for my feed. And also like that's what people will see in their feeds when they follow. Of course, Instagram stories are a little bit more personal and might not be exactly about outfits. But I think that that has really helped gain exposure because I'm not going to surprise anyone. Like people know what they're going to get. And also I have tried to really like comment back to everybody and like really create friendships because that was my goal. Like I wanted to create valuable friendships with people that could relate to me on some level and I could relate to them and create friendships, like quality friendships. And that's really what I was chasing in my life. That's why I started it really. And also because I was documenting my personal style journey. So I had something to document every single day. So that's what I would say is be authentic. Don't surprise people, <laughs> like create something that is predictable for people. With that comes consistency, color scheme, like a bunch of other factors. But that's definitely what I would start with. Now that was question one. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to run through them a little bit quicker. Favorite fashion YouTubers and Instagrams you follow? So I really like Lizzie Hadfield's channel because she shows like more of a vlog style of a lot of her outfits. She's very much fashion related. I also like Estee's content of course. She's just such a real and genuine person. So that's why I chose to paint her in my last painting. NYC Bambi is another really great one because she shares my love of neutrals. So she has uh, a really great like Instagram. She also has a YouTube channel as well. But then I of course love Jeanne Damas for her classic French style. She's very like feminine in the way that she dresses and I just relate to that a lot. Also Caroline Joy. She's on Instagram. I'll put everybody's links down in the description. She's someone that I came across about a year ago and she just has this great like minimalist style. She's just always been one of my favorite content creators. Next is where's your backdrop from? So I use this paper backdrop a lot um, and I get that from B&H Photo. I get that question quite frequently. What camera and lens do you use? Okay, so I had to write this down because I, <laughs> I'm not like the techie one around here. It's definitely Zach. He does all of this type of stuff, but it is the Canon 80D and the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter 1.8. What inspired you to become a YouTuber? Um, actually, 2014, I started this channel with Zach and we just started it to like have documentation of like our life and to have kind of a video diary of all of that. And that was back before a lot of people were really doing that. But we kind of were like, this isn't really right for us. So we kind of just shut down our channel. And in 2016, I started it back up, just document, documenting more about like the things that I really cared about at the time, being like books and fashion. And um, so it's just been a natural evolution and discussion about things in my life that I cared about at that time and it still is. And it's been really fun to be able to talk more fashion related than a lot of other things. 
Next, how do you deal with negative people and comments? This is a really big topic and I think that the community online is really trying to respond and create more of a like positive atmosphere. So I try to judge like what the intention is behind comments that people leave. And I think that if I feel like it's just malicious or someone's just having a really bad day and taking it out, I just delete and block because I just think that there's no time in my life for that and I don't really want to leave that stuff around to create a negative environment. So if I believe that like someone's just doing it not as like positive or constructive reasons behind saying something, then I definitely just block early, block often, and I move on with life. <laughs> I also think of the comment section as a place for me to talk with other people and create a real friendship and so that's really what I'm trying to do is to create quality friendships and um, a good community. So if other people who really don't relate to the content or anything like that are putting people down, um, then I definitely take care of that. You know, I think also a lot of people unintentionally say things that are, especially toward petite women, can be very like negative. So if I want to create a positive and uplifting environment regarding especially petite women, there's just certain things that I'm not going to put up with. How do you build an audience in any platform? So I think it has a lot to do with three main factors, which is consistency. When I follow along with different vloggers and stuff, some are daily uploaders. And once they go to like three or four times a week, it's totally unfair for me to feel this way because it's their life and how long that they have to spend uploading all the time. But I feel like there's a little bit more distance, like we've grown apart <laughs> if they just don't post as much. So. I try to keep that in mind like when I'm doing my own stuff. So I think consistency or at least knowing like when you're gonna come over into people's lives is really important. I also try to be, I think kindness is really important online and just being a friend really. So when you're thinking about friendships, it's how many times you see that person, it's how kind they are. But then also online, I think that there's just so many people uploading that quality content is really important. I try to think about like how my audio sounds and lighting and Zach does amazing work with his photography background on like, you know, setting up the camera and also he has just amazing editing skills that I honestly would be completely lost if I was gonna try to do that all myself. So I'm really lucky and fortunate that like I have this amazing brain that works <laughs> with me on this stuff. Again, it would just be consistency and kindness and quality. Okay, so these are more like style and clothing questions next. So how do you afford to redo your whole wardrobe with expensive clothes? I'm always curious about the different ways people fund their life. I think it really is interesting like how other people fund their life. Just taking advice like financially from other people has been one of the most important things to me as I've gone in my career and all that. I think it's important to realize that Zach and I, we met in college, we got married in college, we had absolutely nothing. And I still have a record of like the budgets that we had back then and it was just like unbelievable. But now like I've been in my career for several years now, so there's that, like we've also paid off a lot of our student loans so I think that now it just comes down to priorities in our life so we don't live in an expensive area and we've actually driven a car that we've had for quite a long time now it's like a 2006 car and the panel just fell off the door the other day <laughs> so like we're just not riding in style or anything but it's just priorities a lot of people they drive a lot we don't so we don't really need a nice car or a nice car payment we don't really have a lot of payments going on anymore so the money that i have into my wardrobe is something that i've invested because I think that it's really important to have a personal style, especially for my career. And also because it's been amazing to document this and to create more of like what really is becoming more of a fashion blog. It makes sense in my life to be able to fund that probably more than a lot of other people would. But in that same breath, I don't do it just out of like, I want to buy clothes. I do it because there's people that I want to feature or brands that I want to feature that, yeah, might cost a little bit more, but they have ethical standards that a lot of other companies don't. So that's a very long-winded answer, but I really can't answer it 
shorter and I have to explain all that completely, I think. How have you developed your style and what clothes did you prefer before? So the style I preferred before, I would look back on it and say that it was a little bit like um, preppy, maybe even a little suburban and um, pretty much anything that was on sale. So a lot of times I would go to like the J. Crew uh, like warehouse sales where they would have stuff for like dirt cheap and maybe they didn't fit me right. So I, my style just felt like it was a bit of a mess and nothing matched before and so what I would try to do is I would just go on Pinterest and type in I have a pair of jeans I want to wear today like try to figure out how other people styled that but I didn't really get very far because that was everyone else's style I decided at one point I want to completely re like replace and renovate my closet and just make it something where I can pull things out from the dark and things match I wanted things to be that cohesive and so that's what I did I nailed down a color scheme and I did that by establishing, again, on Pinterest, like the style that I liked, the colors that were in that mix, and deleted the other photos that weren't in that color scheme. And I was able to kind of figure out the brands I liked and the color scheme. And um, from there, I also just started with basics. So I gave away a lot of the other things that didn't really make sense in my wardrobe anymore. Um, I didn't get rid of everything that wasn't ethical because I, I was transitioning to that as well at the same time. I just kind of kept those things because there's not point to giving away something just because it wasn't made ethically at one point. That's kind of how I started, just with basics. And this, this answer really belongs in its own video. But those were my like smaller tips. Where do you get style inspiration from? So I just mentioned Pinterest. That still is a really great tool and something that I still try to utilize a lot. But also other Instagram accounts is really helpful. Like the other day I was like, I really am looking for an ideal purse. And so I was able to look at like what other Instagrammers use. So that's just an amazing tool. YouTube, of course. And then also it's nice to be able to get inspiration from like old movies. So I really like the old classic movies a lot. And I notice things now about like how they wear things and everything like that. So I get really inspired by that. Have you ever considered a capsule wardrobe? So I started with a capsule wardrobe more or less and I tried to limit myself to like 32 pieces. But since after like figuring out my personal style, which that really helps you if you're like trying to figure out which pieces are super important to you, you start to build on that like with statement pieces. That's really what I have done is I'm kind of semi-minimal because basically I have a small closet so I can only do so much with the space I have. Brands similar to Everlane's price point. Okay, so I absolutely love free people. Um, I just love whenever I can go into their physical store. But also, I'm looking into and other stories. I've been trying to like dig in and do more research about that company. And then Madewell. I've always loved Madewell. And then also, there's another company called Sisterhood, which I'm starting to really gravitate toward. And I'm, I have some pieces that I'm just so excited to try from them. And they have a really reasonable price point. I just love it so much. Why don't you try color or bright clothes? So I've always really been drawn to neutrals um, and like black and white. I absolutely love that combination. We had it in our wedding. And honestly, I use that in my home too. I love more like earth textures. I love when things are made out of real materials like wood. That's one thing I really hope for in my home one day is to have like real hardwood floors and that type of thing. So my furniture is all very like earthy in that regard. So I've just kind of always been drawn to more neutral colors, but I will be adding some red dresses into my outfits now and I'm just super excited. This also goes back to the idea of how I want everything in my closet to be cohesive and I can just pull out two things in the dark and you can definitely do that with neutrals like nothing else. Do you wear prints? Next, what tips would you give to someone who is looking for their personal style? I think there's nothing more important than realizing when you're just doing something because of the sake of everyone else doing it. Um, that goes way beyond fashion. <laughs> and that's more like a whole philosophical question. But it's really important to me. Like I don't, I try to not think things just because 
of group think. And I try not to wear things just because everyone in my city wears that same thing. That being said, I don't mind when there's something on trend that is just absolutely beautiful, but I really try to do that just intentionally. So yeah, finding your personal style is so important. Where to begin though can be really hard. I would like write down exactly what it is that you love to wear, like what's, what you feel most comfortable in, your, your most truest self, maybe what your favorite color is and create a color scheme off of that. How do you go about mixing black and brown? I always thought it was a no, but I see you doing it and it looks good. So I really don't follow a lot of like style rules. I actually try to find why and like try to break them. <laughs> so that's why I take my photo every day of my outfit and just see what I think and how I can combine them. Uh, one of the things that is true about like combining like black and navy is that that comes from looking unintentional. So I think that that's really important. If it looks unintentional or unplanned or accidental, that's where it starts to fall apart. So if black and brown are just really close in shade to where you might have thought, oh, I thought they were both black because I was in a really dim room when I was trying this on, that would be like why black and brown aren't supposed to mix. But if you have like different colors or different textures, I mean, that's really where that comes from, I think. Have you ever thought about designing your own clothing? When I was a little girl, I definitely like, that's what I wanted. I even drew the way that my shop storefront was going to look. And I wanted like this spiral staircase and the whole deal. <laughs> Um, since doing all of this fashion related stuff, I have really thought about it, but the people who do that, they work so incredibly hard and I admire that, but I don't think I would ever take the plunge anytime soon. <laughs> Advice on keeping an all black or all basics wardrobe interesting. Accessories are so important with this. You could have the most basic, most uniform outfit but if you have an amazing bag that you wear with it or amazing accessories ones that you've actually invested in or ones that are really important to you like heirloom pieces that is what's going to bring uniqueness and um, flair <laughs> to any sort of style any sort of outfit so that's super important also i've noticed how important it is to get a good pair of shoes so if you have a really basic outfit, definitely dress it up with shoes. It will take you miles. When can I see you styling a dress? So I've always had some dresses, not a ton. Um, they're hard to mix and match, of course, um, but I actually have some really great dresses coming soon. So um, definitely check out my Instagram because I feature all my stuff over there for outfits. What is your favorite color? I love pink, especially like if it's like an earthy type of clay pink. I think that's just so gorgeous. How do you get rid of clothes that don't fit your style anymore? I think it's important to um, be able to shop secondhand. And so also, if you're looking for a way to like get rid of some of the items in your closet, um, you can definitely sell secondhand. Like that is a huge market right now. Um, and also it's just really great. Like there's so many benefits of it. So if, on this channel, um, I've been doing closet sales like once every season. And that just really helps me to be able to keep a minimal wardrobe and fewer pieces. But also it's really fun because I can connect with you guys on a deeper level. Like I write a handwritten note, like sometimes people write back. And so that's really fun to be able to like keep these friendships growing and stuff. I've only shipped to the US, but I'm thinking about going to um, ship to Canada as well. I'm looking into the logistics of all that. So the things sell out with, I think the last time I did one, it sold out within a couple hours. And in the last couple months, I've had a growth on my channel that was like 50,000 people. <laughs> so you might wanna turn on that bell notification because next time I do a closet sale, I can't promise that um, I'm gonna be able to inform you in time. So the notification really is the best way to be the first to know about it. Cause as soon as the sale goes live, that's exactly when I put the video up. Can you recommend ways to style lighter layers, cardigans, jackets, etc.? Okay, well that will definitely come in the fall. Right now, I don't really have a lot of that for summertime, but I'm really looking forward to being able to style things for fall. It's like my favorite season, so 
I will tell you then. I'm going to attend a wedding this August. Can you please recommend a dress? Okay, so Everlane has a go weave wrap dress that is just incredibly beautiful and is perfect for like more formal events. So I actually have one dress in that's like a blue color that's really pretty. I'll link it down below. Um, but then also I have a black one from them that would be really great too if you have to go to any other like sort of situation. You don't really have a lot of notice if there's like a funeral or anything. So I always have like one black dress on hand. And I think that one is a very like beautiful and conservative cut. It's hard to find a dress as a wedding guest because there's only certain colors you can use and the shapes and all that are really important. And then the events, colors and scenarios, like everything's so specific, but that one has so many different sizes and also colors. So I think that would definitely be where I'd look. Favorite lip product. Okay, so I'm actually wearing it right now, which is the Lila B Lip Cheek Duo. There's several reasons why I like that, but I think that there's been so many lip colors that I've tried, and this one feels like the most natural and grown up. I use two different colors. I'll try to, re I don't remember the names of them off the top of my head, but I think it's Be Lovely, and then there's also a red color that I use. So I'll just leave that down in the description too, so you guys can check it out. But Lila B has just the absolute best lip cheek duo. I love it. Okay, so the rest of these questions are like more personal. So um, the first one is, how did you and Zach meet? So Zach and I had just...